Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with the film issue series. And this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more about that later. So this time we're gonna be talking about what I call fat rolls. If you are a shooter, new or experienced of medium format film, you probably have noticed at some point in your career uh, what I call fat roll, which means your backing paper, your roll of 120 film hasn't properly tightened while it was advancing and reeling to the next spool. This is a major problem mostly on toy cameras or entry level cameras such as the Diana, the Olga and some others, but it can happen sometimes in some other higher end cameras if your spring for the tension of the roll is not properly tight or if when you load it sometimes you don't keep it tight. So what I'm showing right now is how I load and unload my Plowbell Machina. When you unload it, you should always double check to like re-spool your roll a little bit. And when you're loading it, you want to keep a little tension when loading. For this purpose of this video, I on purpose unwounded some 120 film and develop it to show you guys how those issues uh, see look or can be um, you know identified on your film. So these two rolls that I'm showing right now have been on purpose screwed up so you guys can see. Honestly, I'm really surprised at how much 120 film can hold uh, its light tightness towards the fact that I basically unwound them as much as I could in a normal lit room. When you are loading film, uh, medium format specifically, they always recommend you to do it in subdu subdued light, which means basically doing it in a scene like I am today, not in the middle of the sunshine, get getting the sun on the camera. And this is because the light will leak through the spool and the backing paper sometimes and expose your edges. But I'll do a whole video on some film that sometimes does that or does it more than others. In this case, I was doing Kodak. Kodak backing paper is pretty good nowadays and you don't have much problem. So as you can see on the video, there's uh, all the exposures are fine. There's a six by seven shots on my Plowbo Machina, some Ektar and some Portra, and both rolls are fine except for the very last frame. Uh, so that gives you a perspective of if you ever unload your camera and you drop the roll on the floor like I did on this video on purpose, which I didn't record, but you can you I can tell you I dropped them on the floor. Nothing happened. I had to actively unspool the film and the backing paper to create the light leaks you see in the images. So like I mentioned at the beginning, Skillshare is a sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I've been actually looking into some classes like Kyle McDowell has made some classes about film photography. There's some stuff about darkroom and other genders. I've been enjoying the MKBHD video about how he creates his online videos, which I found very interesting about his edits, how he makes notes, how he uses bold uh, letters to create B-roll or A-roll shots. So when he is shooting, he knows how to emphasize the text or looking at camera at the same time. I've also enjoyed the Dan Rubing series of videos about travel photography, phone photography, and further. First thousand people to click the link below will have a free month trial to the Skillshare Premium. So if you ever are unloading a camera and you notice that they're bulky, like chunky, that they're not tightly wound, you wanna make sure, like I said, to wind it properly with your hands, put that tape, put that rubber band or anything, and send them to your lab or develop them yourself at home. This won't create a major issue to most of the role. I've heard people disposing their film because they thought they had lost it all and, you know, maybe dropping the film and thinking that, you know, it was done. That film was trash right now. But be sure that the 120 backing paper does a great job of keeping and shielding the film from light. So, yeah, in this case, like I said, I sacrificed two rolls of my own shots during trips and so on. And honestly, I'm very impressed that nothing really happened. And one question that a lot of people are having is, did this happen in camera or out of camera? So to make sure you understand, outside of your camera or out of the camera light leaks will cover all the frame from the top of the edge of the film all the way to the middle of the film. In this case, not all the way because I didn't really open it all the way. But if the, it was a light leak inside the camera, the corners or the what should be black of your frame should not be exposed to light. Only the middle 
of the frame where you're taking your shot where your image is basically printed on that negative or positive so if you're having doubts of it's in the camera light leak or out of camera light leak make sure to check what i just told you if the edges have light it happened outside the camera either loading unloading or maybe your lab or yourself when you're developing and if it happens inside the frame then you probably have an issue with your camera if the borders are nice and clean that means that it did not happen in loading and unloading it happened when you were taking your shot maybe the back foam is broken and so on but i'll make a whole video about internal light leaks and how to identify them if it's the back if it's the body and so on it's not always super easy and it depends a lot on the camera you're using but i hope that will help people so yeah in this case once again in this film issue series i want to show you what happened with a fat roll and like i said again it happens mostly in toy cameras there's a few ways to prevent this on toy cameras is like keeping the pressure plate which is usually the back that pushes the film against where it gets exposed with maybe some extra foam or some springs or some things like that that's why the top brands like hazabad uh, bronica mamillas and pentax and all these have that pressure plate that you used to change from 120 to 220 it would change a little bit of the pressure because of the backing paper was different and in the 220 there was a part that was no backing paper but yeah just to get your head around if you have a fat roll make sure that you have that pressure that when you load your film you keep that tension and you should be fine and honestly from my experience in this experiment which i screwed up two rolls on purpose film handles you know mistreat way better than we you know think in general especially when you're new to film it's very scary thinking a light sensitive thing is going to get totally ruined by misuse misknowledge or so on so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i'm here in basically my terrace in this finished house i don't have a proper studio yet and i hope to have it soon i hope you enjoyed you learned something from this and this can help you identify issues when you're shooting film or you're new to film or you get your lab scans and you're really upset what happened this can you know throw some light on that issue and maybe help you shoot better film more times and get better results so yeah thanks for watching guys and remember to hit that link to skillshare if you feel like that free month of premium skillshare and you can take you know this summer time to learn some new skills well thank you for watching see you in the next one and bye